What's up, Tom Sox Nation? I'm Nick Grossman. We're back for another edition of Tom Sox Conversations. Today, our guest is Chris Finwood, the head coach at Old Dominion University. Coach Finwood, thanks for joining us today. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Nick. Of course. So starting off more broadly speaking, what value do you see in your players playing summer, summer league baseball? Well, there's a lot of different values. You know, first of all, socially, I think it's, it's really helpful for the guys to um, get around players from other teams, other uh, organizations, and then also playing in an organization uh, like the Tom Sox, where uh, a lot of the same things that we value um, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking with Jeff and, and I knew, you know, those things are valued there as well. The team part of the game, which isn't talked about that much, uh, certainly means a lot there. Um, the history of success, they're used to winning, um, and doing things the right way. So, uh, there's a lot of value in it. And we try to put kids, of course, this summer's, you know, just a little bit different, but we try to put kids, um, in a number of different summer situations based on kind of their ability or who's looking at them and, you know, where we think they need to play and those sorts of things. Um, But we always like to have a a guy or two or, I don't know, we've had three or four also um, with the Tom Sox. That's important to us. Yeah, definitely. Um, Those names are some that Tom Sox fans certainly never forget. Kyle Battle, I think we just interviewed him the other day, so he'll be in a special soon enough. But, yeah. The relationship between ODU and Tom, the Tom Sox has been great over the years. So going off of that, what do you look for in choosing a summer ball team to develop an, uh, a relationship with as a program? Are there boxes that you're looking for them to check off? Or it's like, hey, that's a good place. I want to send my guys summer every summer. Yeah, I think you want to know some of the people um, that are coaching the team, running the team, kind of what they're about. Um, you want the, you know, the housing situation to be solid and, and some of those sorts of things. Uh, where are the guys living? Um, we try to check into all of that. And then, you know, what their opportunities to play for. Because let's face it, they're going there to develop for the summer. And, um, you know, that's, that's as important as anything. And like you mentioned, you know, Kyle, I think uh, Vinny Pasquantino was on that same team. Uh, Bryce Windham was on that same team. And all those guys are playing professional baseball now. We've had Hunter Gregory, uh, who was our our top pitcher last year, on that same team. Uh, We were sending a really good freshman arm, Gio Rivera, this summer until everything got shut down. So hopefully he'll be there next summer. And uh, so we always – we understand the caliber of play um, that exists there, and we always want to send players that can can help add value, you know, both uh, as people – but also as, as athletes help them win ball games. Vinny is certainly a player and a personality that Charlottesville does not forget and will always no. remember. And no one forgets um, Vinny. Hard, hard one to forget. So you mentioned all those guys who have been to Charlottesville from ODU. What have you noticed about them when they returned to Norfolk after spending a summer in Charlottesville? Well, first thing, you know, we ask everybody kind of a debrief, like how'd the summer go? what was good, what wasn't good, because we want to get feedback too. And like I said, Jeff values honest feedback on, on all, all of that. So we uh, ask him about it. You know, we haven't had one negative comment um, about Charlottesville ever. And uh, that's, that's impressive because, you know, I want the kids to be honest. I want to know so that when, as we're moving forward with other players, we can have a, a better idea of, of what to look for. Um, but all the guys come back. They love the culture. They love, uh, you know, the, the family type atmosphere. It's a lot of games. I played in the Valley League in college, and uh, but it's nice, you know, it doesn't get as hot in the Valley, and uh, for most cases, than some other places. But so the weather's fine, um, and uh, the travel's not too bad. Yeah, definitely, it's a great place to send your kids. So when you mentioned you're looking for the best fit for them, and You want them to improve over the summer. When you send your guys to a team like the Tom Sox, are you leaving it up to them to determine what they want to work on with the team? Are you kind of giving them a list of things of what they should work on, reaching out to the coaching staff, making sure a pitcher does this or an outfielder works on that, or is it just up to them? Well, I I don't think uh, you can ever just leave it up to them. I mean, it's our job to to help guide them. Having said that, we we talk about 
some specific things that we want them to work on. Um, but then at the end of the day, it is up to them because we're not there. And I think they're, they're in kind of lies the beauty in it. Um, they don't have us breathing down their throat every second of the day, telling them exactly what to do, uh, micromanaging their day. They have to figure some of this out on their own, which is valuable because that's what they're going to have to do in professional baseball if they are good enough to get to that next step. And so they've got to kind of organize their days, their time management. You know, how am I going to get this kind of extra work in around our games, lifting, eating right? There's a lot of really valuable things that you can see a player come back just a bit more mature than when he left because of that. And so they're getting some guidance there, but I, I don't think, um, you know, a summer coach's, um, you know, place in the world is to try to change a kid's mechanics. Um, and we talk about that too. You know, we're, we're, we're spending, uh, you know, eight months, 10 months out of every year with these guys, like seeing them every day. Uh, get, we've got a lot of equity built up with these guys. And, and I've had this talk with summer coach before. You know, how can you see him for two weeks and think that you're going to tell him something better than what we do? And we see him for every day for 10 months. So um, I, I don't think that's really a wise way to look at it. But And our kids understand that, too. Like, um, I think talking to other players, um, especially pitchers, you know, you get a different grip from this guy who's got a really good curveball. Uh, those are all great things. But trying to change somebody's arm swing or change hitting mechanics – I don't really think that's the place of summer baseball. It's more about how to play hard every day, um, how to get yourself ready to play hard, and how to just get work at getting better. Certainly great preparation for the next level as we've talked to some guys this summer who have been preparing for the MLB draft, who've been drafted recent years. They said the Valley League, it does prepare them, puts a lot of responsibility on them. So as someone who has been around college baseball for some time, how have you seen summer league baseball evolve and grow over the years? I think when I was playing in college back in the eighties, um, there were only, I don't know, maybe four or five college summer leagues in the whole country. It was really competitive just to get in a summer league. Um, now there's dozens, you know, dozens and dozens of, of every aspect and ability level. And, and that's a good thing. It's more opportunities for kids to play. Um, but you have to make sure you're picking the, the right ones um, for your guys. We, we want them to be challenged, but we also don't want them to be over their skis in terms of the competition level for that year. Um, and so the Valley League's a really good marriage from that because it's very good baseball. Um, it's in, but it's also, you know, you can take a really good freshman or sophomore and um, he can have success in that league. Um, and, and that's what we want, you know, we want them to be challenged, but also come back feeling like they, they got something accomplished stuff. Cause baseball's hard. Like, you know, you can, you can play a lot and it, it can beat you up no matter what league you're in, but you want to come back feeling a little bit better than, than you left. Certainly. It's definitely about finding that, that right balance and it is hard at times. So one last question, an inside source told me you're a big reader. Oh what yeah. Books have you, what books have you been reading during this quarantine? Oh man, I read I read about six or seven books at a time. Wow. Um, I usually at night before I go to sleep will read a kind of a historical fiction book, a Clive Cussler book. I really like his stuff. I'm reading a book called uh, The Titanic Secret right now. Um, Steve Barry's a good author. Uh, what's I got a couple over here? David Baldacci. I like some of his stuff. Um, I'm also a big uh, uh, reader of uh, Stoic philosophy. So Ryan Holiday has some fantastic books. Um, one's called The Obstacle is the Way. Uh, another one's called uh, Silence is the Key. And the last one, I think I have on my desk, uh, it's somewhere here. Um, it's called How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. <laughs> That's a great title. Uh, but so those are those are the main things. I, I really enjoy the the team building books. Uh, the Culture Code is one of my favorites by Coyle. Um, he, he also wrote a really good book called The Talent Code, uh, which, if anybody's into that, is, is a lot of fun. And there's a really good baseball book I'm actually rereading. You can see it here. So a former big leaguer wrote this called Sean, named Sean Green. 
It's called The Way of Baseball. Um, and it's just a – it's not – doesn't take long at all to read, but he kind of walks through his struggles in the game and how he kind of found – found himself uh, and ended up being an all-star um, and having some big hits to help the Dodgers win a World Series. But uh, that's, a, that's a neat book if anybody just wants a little baseball fix while they're waiting on the, the big leagues to start playing again. We may have to put that on the summer reading list for the yeah, Tom yeah, Sox next one. summer. There you go. It's a good one. It's worth it for sure. All right. Well, I appreciate all the book recommendations, the baseball talk. Thank you for joining us today. Nick, it's my pleasure. You guys do a fantastic job, and anything I can do to support the Tom Sox, we're always going to do, man. We certainly appreciate that. Tom Sox Nation, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank Coach Chris Finwood for joining us one more time. As always, Tom Sox, if you like this content and any other Tom Sox content, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Check out our YouTube page. Got a bunch of great videos coming out this summer to hold you over during quarantine. And as always, Go Sox. Thanks for checking out this episode of Tom Sox Conversations. If you want more, be sure to check out the Tom Sox social media, as well as the Valley Baseball League YouTube and social media for more great content throughout the 2020 season.